What a tough year this has been and how unpredictable. Even as I record this, London is reeling under newly imposed tier three restrictions as coronavirus infections continue to rise, even as they've deployed a vaccine. The unpredictability of course spread to the car industry and new car sales took an absolute battering this year. Used cars on the other hand, have done rather well. But how about classic cars? But with the economy crashing, the market being mostly limited to online selling and the implications of the 2030 ICE, that's internal combustion engine car, ban in the UK and similarly in other countries, you could justifiably imagine that trying to figure out which classic cars to buy next year, both for your petrol head fix and also as an investment, if that sort of thing is still possible, is potentially a minefield right now. But in this video, we'll do both. And you know what? There's quite a bit of good news to be had. So sit back, turn up your headphones and be ready to take some notes because this is going to get interesting. Before we get into 17 classic cars to buy in 2021 and why they're a better investment than property, make sure that you're subscribing to youtube.com forward slash browncarguy and browncarguy.com. Follow me on all the social media channels by searching for hashtag brown car guy. You can see it on my hat right there and sponsor my content at patreon.com forward slash Shazad Sheikh. More about that at the end of this video. Cool. Let's get into this. So is it a good idea to invest in classics? Could you actually see your investment grow? Well, yes, you could. More than some traditional investments in many cases. Uh, now, before I get into this research that was put out by uh, Vanarama recently, uh, and I'll put the link uh, of the source below in the description, um, something that they said, and it's worth mentioning, uh, there are no guarantees. There's always a risk involved in investments and cars are no different. In fact, in addition to the rising asset value of cars, you need to consider storage, maintenance, insurance costs, plus repair and restoration expenses, especially if you intend to run them. That said, the average value of an affordable classic has been seen to increase by 97% over a decade, even in half that time, values were seen to increase by as much as 33%. Keep in mind, that's usually how much a new car depreciates by in its first year. So instead of losing 30 to 50% on a new car in its first few years, think about this. You could buy a usable daily driver modern classic and potentially make that much in the same period. So Vanarama looked at the value of things like stocks and shares, property, art, uh, at an investment level of about 15,000 pounds. They chose that value to compare to equivalent classics, uh, classic cars going for about the same money. What they found was that the five cars that they looked at all gained more value over a decade than some of these things. So from the chart, you can see that whilst stocks do well in the shorter term, over a 10 year period, a classic car appreciates by almost as much, 97% compared to 107% for stocks. However, classic cars are consistently ahead of property, doubling value in over a decade, and that's a surprise, and they are well ahead of art and even gold. Looking at the cars they chose to study, with starting prices below 15,000 pounds in 2010, they identified the 1961 Volvo P1800 as the best place to see your money grow, rising in value by 283%. That's an extra 22,000 pounds added to its value. Interestingly, according to the chart, the value seems to rocket up in 2017. Incidentally, that's when the great Sir Roger Moore passed away. He made the car famous in his role as TV's The Saint before he became James Bond. Keep in mind, things like this do often have an impact on classic car values. Now, it's great to see Japanese cars being acknowledged, loved and recognized as classics worthy of investment, with the Wankel engined 1981 Mazda RX-7 in second place, rising by 239%. The legendary VW Beetle, of course, is right up there uh, at third place at 157%, increasing by 10,000 pounds. I'm a little surprised by the 1968 Ford Mustang GT being so low on the list at 67%, but I suspect that's a little skewed because 60s muscle cars rose steeply in value over the previous decade, particularly in the mid to late 2000s. I've been saying for a couple of years now that the XJS, also later a Saint car when he was played by Ian Ogilvy, was a good place to put your money. And sure enough, they went up by 39%. And I suspect they will increase a lot more in the coming decade. 
Now what about 2020, this crazy year? Surely no one is buying classics during all these lockdowns, right? Well, actually a lot of people with a bit of money found themselves sat at home with nothing to do but surf the internet with uh, itchy trigger fingers and a restless credit card. Unsurprisingly, quite a few auction houses have reported record results this year. One, Gooding & Co. reported $9.2 million worth of sales and a 77% sell-through rate for its online auction. Bringatrailer.com had some of the most traffic to their website ever during the strictest lockdowns. So actually, the market has remained consistently strong. Before we get into actual cars that you should think about investing in, what makes a classic car likely to be collectible and hence appreciate in value? Well, obviously demand, people hunting for them, snapping them up, that of course makes them special. Porsche 911s always fall into this category for example. But be aware, demand is not always consistent. As mentioned with the Volvo P1800 for example, uh, they could be triggered by topical events, deaths of famous people, Ferrari values shot up in the late 80s after founder Enzo Ferrari died. Or it could be to do with anniversaries of some kind and sometimes if something suddenly starts trending on social media. Of course, demand can lead to rarity and of course scarcity will see values increase. However, that doesn't mean that you've already missed out and can't afford one because even when that happens, hunt around carefully because often classics, especially modern classics, are with owners who don't realize their potential values or don't want to be bothered with restoring or reviving the cars. And that's when you could bag yourself a bargain. For example, third generation Honda Prelude values are going up because of its unique, sleek design, its clever engineering, and including being the first production car on sale to have mechanical four-wheel steering. Those are hard to find, yet I've seen one being driven around here as a beat-up daily driver in my local area. I'm still trying to identify who actually owns it because I don't think they realize its value. It's a clever car. And that segues to the next important aspect of what makes a, a classic collectible, design and technology, which of course plays a big part in the car's desirability and classic status, especially if something was unique, significant or epochal in its day. Values of the original McLaren F1 supercar are stratospheric because it was so advanced and highly engineered in its day. Then there's just uh, plain nostalgia. And this is often a generational thing and is why, as I mentioned earlier, you can have situations where suddenly there was a boom in 60s muscle cars. It was due to the generation that grew up with them cashing in retirement checks and wanting to live out their childhood dreams. Don't forget pop culture like movies etc. It's why the DeLorean, uh, a car that arguably was a failure in its day for a number of reasons that I won't get into but then made famous by the Back to the Future series remains a solid investment and a much loved cult classic. And finally, of course, there is the, uh, that indefinable X factor, something that it just makes a car special, like the World Rally Championship dominating Audi Ur Quattro, James Dean's fateful Porsche, and of course, Steve McQueen's bullet Mustang, stuff like that. So insurance specialists, Haggerty, do uh, something that they call a bull market list in which they pick their top 10 cars to invest in. They do it for the UK and the USA. I won't list all of them, but I'll pick out some of the cars they mention. But I'll leave out the obvious ones. For example, Ferraris, Lamborghinis and Porsches, etc. I mean, having said that, the original Testarossa and the 328, that's the one after the one that Magnum drove, which was a 308, they are both solid investments right now. And having hit its 30th anniversary, I think we'll see Lamborghini Diablo values rise more steeply, especially as it was the last car designed before Audi VW Group's involvement and hence arguably the last pure Lambo. As for Porsches, aside from the 911, which always does well, the 928 is doing well, 944, 924 have all seen their values go up. I'd say it might be a good idea right now to snap up a 968 next year. Before we get into some of the other cars they recommend, it's interesting to note what they say regarding the 2030 ban on petrol and diesel cars, uh, car sales. While it won't prohibit the sale of classic cars, it is ultimately trying to discourage people from using fossil fuels. So they reckon there's a possibility that it might dampen classic car values. Personally, even if that does happen, I think it'll be a temporary blip for two reasons. Firstly, I think petrol and diesel cars will be around 
at least until 2040, if not beyond, as I discuss in another video. Because many of us will still be driving conventional ICE cars probably right up to 2050. Remember, the sale of used cars is not going to be banned, just new ones. And secondly, the move to electric cars could actually see uh, classics become more desirable. People want to keep, might want to keep hold of them. So I'm actually pretty certain that values will increase and there will be a surge on so-called modern classics and cars that we don't yet think of as classics. For example, a 2020 present-day Honda Civic Type R, which is an awesome machine, will be a 30-year-old classic by 2050. And you just know it'll still be a reliable runner. Think about that. So, focusing on the less obvious classics, here's what caught my eye in the Haggerty list. The first generation Land Rover Discovery Series 1 from 1989 to 1998. That's a somewhat unusual suggestion, particularly as most of these are either well-worn and battered or highly modified for hardcore off-road use now. But I reviewed this car back in 1990 and it was a standard setter, a family SUV based on the Range Rover at the time. You know, I recently reviewed the brand new Defender and I did say in that video that it feels more like a successor to the original Discovery than the previous Defender. So good original model Discoveries are becoming collectible. In fact, Haggerty saw disco prices up by over 15% compared to 2019. The Mercedes SLS AMG with the Gullwind doors, I mean, come on, and it's a proper German muscle car, loud and theatrical, you gotta love it. Currently at around the £170,000 uh, mark, prices have increased recently by 2.5%. The original Mini Cooper, can you believe that prices for a 1960s car are around £24,000? And while they didn't have much movement this year, these are becoming rare and highly collectible. The 1986-1991 Renault 5 GT Turbo is something of a legend and prices have rocketed by 39%. It's still possible to get one for under £15,000 but act fast. Toyota third generation MR2, the little mid-engine roadster that looked a bit like a Porsche Boxster and actually was my favourite in that lineup, is an absolute bargain at the moment. You can pick one up for two or three grand easily but values have seen a rise of over 12% so get one now. Interestingly, Haggerty also has the 1964 Honda S600 on the list. I'd also add in its successor, the S800 from 1967. They're both very rare, but brilliant by all accounts. Another surprise might be the 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8. But actually, I can see a trend emerging, not just for these, but all the early SRT models with the big Hemis, like the Chrysler 300C, for example. Well worth it right now. Perhaps equally astonishing to some, the J80 series Toyota Land Cruiser of the 1990s is listed. This generation is often regarded as the best of the modern versions. Indestructible, reliable, highly capable and sure to be rewarded for its legendary status with rising values. Now here's a few suggestions of my own. I mentioned 60s muscle cars earlier. Now I reckon it's time for the 80s versions. Things like the Chevrolet Camaro and the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. The Camaro Z28 and the iconic IROC Z from the, from the mid 80s are highly sought after and collectible now, but I always preferred the Trans Am with the pop-up lights, particularly because that was the Knight Rider car. You can pick these up for under £10,000 and even customize them to look like it. The proof that they are experiencing a bit of a renaissance well, one featured prominently in the first series of the Karate Kid continuation series on Netflix, Cobra Kai. Check it out. Earlier, I mentioned the Jaguar XJS. I still have one, but right now I'd also be looking at early XK models from 1997 onwards. For a while they looked dated, but now they're starting to look sexy again. Plenty of those around, so be picky and get the best one you can. Everyone went super crazy last year with the arrival of the all-new muscle car from Toyota. But they were all looking at the 1990s A80 version as featured in the first Fast and Furious movie. Prices have already shot up for those. So now look instead to the previous A70 and A60 versions from the 1980s. I actually owned a 1984 car once. I miss it so much. Today it's worth more than 10 times what I paid for it in the mid-90s. Similarly, check out the 1990s Nissan 300ZX Z32 edition. I feel it's been overlooked and is about to have its day. The BMW 8 Series E31 has been on the up for the last couple of years. It's still possible to get these for around £15,000 and they're well worth it. But I'd also highly recommend the 1980s Mercedes S-Class Coupe, especially the 560 SEC. That was a truly lust-worthy beast. Prices are already in ascendance. Spend between 20 to 40,000 pounds and keep it safe. 
or cruising it because it's really cool. Now there's tons more cars that I could add to this list but I'll end for now with probably another surprise. The original Lexus LS 400. Yep, these were dirt cheap a while back, but good ones have crept back to over 10,000 pounds or more in some cases. Remember in the criteria that we mentioned earlier, cars that are or were epochal or technological advancements? Well, this car was Japan putting all the German luxury cars in the shade at a single stroke. They had crisis meetings in Stuttgart when the LS400 came out. I remember being totally blown away by just how supreme it was when I reviewed it back in 1990. It's definitely worthy of a footnote if not an entire chapter in the annals of automotive history and it will become so after. Find a good one and keep it safe. And that applies to everything really. As stated earlier, I do think all surviving traditional internal combustion engine cars will become future classics as we roll on towards an electric only future. So if there are cars that you've always loved, liked and wanted, now is the time. Get them, drive them, enjoy them while you still can. And rest assured, even when the driving stops because the governments literally eventually legislate us off the roads, I reckon probably around 2050, the values of your classic car will still go up. After all, cars with internal combustion engines will become historical artifacts of mankind's progress because let's be honest, without them, so many of us wouldn't have had the mobility that we've become so used to. Let me know what you think about that. Also in the comments below, tell me uh, what classic or modern classic you reckon is a good bet for fun and investment in 2021. Also, of course, make sure that you are subscribing to youtube.com forward slash brown car guy and hit that notifications bell icon so you don't miss any of these videos. Also, subscribe to browncarguy.com and follow me on all the social media. Just search for my hashtag hashtag brown car guy. If you enjoy my content or have benefited from this video, please consider sponsoring me and you can do that at patreon.com forward slash Shazad Sheikh where you can join Mahabad Ali Omaid over in the UAE. Great guy. I did a buddies video with him on this channel recently. I've also done the same with Tom Conway Gordon and Partha Srinivasan who is also an amazing person to get help uh, from if you're doing stuff on the internet, social media and YouTube channels. In fact, he's helped me to grow this one. Find him on parthens.com and of course check out those buddies conversations on this channel. Just find the playlist here. Check out Isaac Bouchard over at bespokeautos.com in the States. Get some cool cars off him. Plus shout outs of course to uh, Reza Adil. Find him on Instagram at alizade.cigars. Mohammed Qasim, he's of William E. Uh, Henley Management Services at wehms.com and of course Siraj Abasi at virtuosodesign.london. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you all again, uh, all again soon in the next video. Yeah.